Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silik, and we've got a great show in store for you this week. Jordan's gonna show us some awesome tips and tactics on how we can be using our trail cameras this time of year. Lots of great information there, you won't wanna miss that. And Jimmy's got an exciting adventure in store for us too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're actually going to kick off this week's episode doing a little shore fishing for trout and steelhead on the Muskegon River. You won't want to miss that. We're also going to have time for a recipe this week as well. Lots of good stuff. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. The Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com by RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at rbmjigs.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Well, we're gonna, uh... We're crazy, first off. Uh, it's, it's uh, I don't know, 10 degrees maybe? Maybe. Freezing cold. Uh, and we're going to go try to catch steelhead on the Muskegon River. And we're walking in. We're going to walk into this spot. So something a little bit different. Uh, hopefully works out well. You kind of proven you don't always have to have a boat. I mean, this is your classic steelhead rod here, but it's a, it's a nine and a half foot lama glass, uh, medium action steelhead rod, um, Shimano Stratic uh, spinning reel. We'll be running uh, six pound mono. Okay. Uh, and then eventually that does taper down to about a two foot, uh, six pound test fluorocarbon leader. Okay. Uh, and that's just for the visibility side. Um, when you're fishing it this way, and, and this is, uh, I guess a little bit of an old school way of doing it now. Everybody's into center pin fishing and um, you know, that's kind of taken over. Um, when you're walking in like this, especially on a bigger river, the hard part about a center pin is if you have to make a long cast out with it. Hmm. They don't cast out quite as well. So that's why the spinning reel is here today. Um, I fish the monofilament fishing line as my main line because you want that line to still be floating on top of the water. Okay. We're gonna be fishing you know, a bobber or a float. Uh, and you want to be able to actually pick up that slack line, kind of like you would in fly fishing where you're mending that line okay. in order to keep you know, a direct angle to that bobber as it's drifting down. How far of a drift can you get here in this kind of situation? In this situation, I can probably go, oh, 75 to 100 yards oh, with wow. a drift. Okay. Uh, so still you know, pretty good. Center pin fishing, you can get a longer drift. It's just harder to cast it far out with a center pin reel. When walk-in fishing, you need to be pretty self-contained. You're not going to typically bring in a lot of gear, so you need to know exactly what you want. Ben has this setup dialed in with a simple crappie lure tipped with some wax worms. Thread that right up on the hook. 
of that first one. We'll just pop it right out. Kind of put that one up onto the shank a little bit. The old two wax worm set up here. And this one, we just kind of thread on there so that they can't see the hook real well. So when it's floating down, obviously the, the marabou feathers are kind of undulating through the water. There's a little bit of a crystal flash in this one just to give it a little shine. And then the business end, the wax worms on there. Okay. Usually get the job done. Ben also weighted the line with some sinkers to keep it vertical. Then it was time to get this offering in the water. for sure. Definitely not a steelhead here. Nice little rainbow. Oh, pretty fish. Yeah, real pretty fish. Bad. Not bad for 10 degrees or whatever it is out here, right? Oh, that is yeah. a good looking fish right there. We're not even going to pick him up if that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go right ahead. I'm just going to unclip him right here. There he goes. Wow. Back in the river, so nice there, job, there's some man. life this morning. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was he probably hit that 30, 40 yards out there. He did. It was quite a ways out, and it was actually right kind of at the beginning of the drift. So, um, you know, kind of clues me in a little bit as to what's going on. I had just made an adjustment on my float. Um, you know, the water's a little bit higher here than it normally is, and, you know, kind of get, when you first kind of get started, you have to kind of figure out, okay, you know, where depth-wise do I need to be with that bobber? Mm. And you want to have it pretty close to the bottom. I mean, these fish... With it being as cold as it is, they're not going to come up and just, you know, come chasing after your bait. Okay. Um, so you want it to be, ideally, uh, you know, every 10, 15 feet, it'll kind of tick along the bottom. Okay. Um, and so we just had to get that float set right, I think. And So it's about, what, six foot or so out there? Yeah, I'd say it's about six and a half right in that range right okay. in there. And, you know, what we're fishing here really is just kind of a, it's kind of a flat. It's not really like your typical, you know, steelhead hole or anything like that. Um, and it's a kind of a classic wintertime spot. So, you know, when the fish are moving, you know, of course they're always can be in a hole, but they'll start getting up onto the flats and they'll cruise around and they, you know, they get in those current seams and in the holes. But when it's really cold like this, what we found is that these fish actually kind of just like to hang out. You know, they, they really will just kind of hang in a little bit slower moving water. Obviously there needs to still be some current, but um, they'll kind of just hang out in these certain areas where the bottom is a little bit darker, it's a little bit warmer, you know, if the sun comes out it might warm up just like a tenth of a degree, um, and those fish are comfortable in that zone. So um, that's the way we get them in the wintertime. Nice. Pull him on up here a little bit. You know? That's not too bad a deal right there. That is another good looking fish right there. Oh, well that's just perfect. <laughs> I didn't even have to get my hands wet on that one, Jimmy. That's Boy, that awesome. was a pretty fish. Yeah, another great fish. You know, all my buddies will say, I didn't catch that fish. Yeah. You know, because I didn't touch it. But I'm, I'm gonna call that a catch right there. <laughs> I'd say you're two for two. Isn't yeah, right? you know, not too bad. So things are looking, you know, pretty good up in here. Boy, those are pretty fish though. Man. Oh man, they're gorgeous. and. You know, I don't know this for sure, but I always think they look a little bit better in the winter time too. You know, with that snow out there and everything else. I mean, you know, it's uh, it is fun sitting there watching a football game on a nice cold day. I'm not gonna lie, but there is something to be said for you know getting out in Michigan out of doors in the winter time. Uh, there's still a lot of opportunities out yeah, there. Yeah, there is. 
I have known Ben for several years now. He's a tournament bass angler, a big time deer hunter, and worked in the outdoor world in the retail side of things for a long time. I met him as he joined the team at Showspan who helps us produce our big buck nights. We're a company that produces consumer shows in the state of Michigan. Um, specifically, I work on the three sport shows in our state. So the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, uh, which is in January, Outdoorama, uh, which is at the end of February, beginning of March, and then the Ultimate Sport Show in Grand Rapids, which is usually kind of that mid-March time frame, uh, March 19 this year. Um, specifically this year, our Ultimate Sport Show in Grand Rapids is uh, enjoying its 75th anniversary. So we're super excited for that. Um, obviously that's quite a milestone. Um, show was started by Jack Lokes um, 75 years ago. John Lokes uh, took it over from his dad. Um, decided to hire a couple other people. Mike Wilbraham came on board, Henry Boucher. Uh, Adam Starr worked there for a number of years and obviously now I'm working on the show as well. Uh, and it, it's kind of fun, I tell this story quite often. I, I was that kid at the trout pond, you know? I was that kid that, you know, my parents would bring me down to the sports show and they had to tear me away from that place. I think I've spent, you know, by this time thousands of dollars at the trout pond catching trout. I couldn't get enough of it. So, you know, I was the kid that absolutely loved, you know, going to the show. Um, should have known, you know, at that point that maybe there was something there. Um, you know, obviously John and, and, and Henry, you know, recognized that. Um, and it's been a pleasure working for them uh, eight years now. So nice. it's been fantastic. There we go. What a nice rainbow. Put him up here so we can see him. You know, Jimmy, these you hear rainbow trout, you hear steelhead. They are the same fish. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously there are rainbows that hang out in streams, um, and then our steelhead are the lake run fish that go out into Lake Michigan. Uh, you know, spend majority of their life up there and then come up into the rivers. Today we seem to be finding rainbows, but it's not the first fishing trip that I've been on where the targeted fish, well, it didn't want to cooperate, and I'm sure it won't be my last. However, a day on the river landing a handful of rainbow trout on a beautiful sunny winter day, well, sign me up for that any day of the week. All right, get him back in there. We're good. Off he goes. You know, we hear about quite often as outdoorsmen, uh, obviously, you know, we've had these, you know, around in our rivers for quite some time, but uh, pretty special, you yeah, know. Uh, if, if you think across the country and across the world that we have all of these rivers in the great state of Michigan that have all of these trout, steelhead, salmon at the right time of year, I mean, what a great opportunity, Yeah. you know, to be able to come out here and fish these fish. I mean, it really is something special, no doubt about that. We sure do live in a special place. Make sure you get out this winter and explore what our great state has to offer. Whether on a sled, on the ice, chasing a bunny, or walking the banks of our many world-class rivers, here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for our next segment on this week's show, we're going to do something a little bit different, and let's take a look at a few ways you can use trail cameras this time of year. Well, it's mid-January here in Michigan. Uh, today we're out doing something a little bit different. This time of year, a lot of people will take their trail cameras and put them inside and they're, they're kind of done working up for the year. It's been a long fall, lots of deer hunting. This is actually one of my favorite times of the year to run trail cameras. Um, if you're like me and you just like nature, there's so many cool things that you can capture in the winter and there's so much sign. Right here I'm sitting above a what is usually a coyote den, sometimes used by fox apparently used a lot by raccoons right now because there's a ton of coon tracks going in and out. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to capture something a little bit different with your trail cameras instead of letting them sit inside. We're also going to set up some cameras for deer today to see what deer have made it through, when deer are shedding, kind of look at the health of the deer herd. 
I'm still a deer hunter at heart. That's always the first priority, but I've always got a few cameras set up in kind of unique locations, and, and this is gonna be one of them. I'm gonna set up a camera here on this den and hope that a coyote or a fox or something will come in here. Uh, one important thing when you are setting up on a den like this to get the best results is knowing the settings of your camera and how you kind of want to use those in certain situations. Lots of raccoon tracks here. Um, I know that I'm going to get a lot of videos of raccoons and I'm hoping that somewhere in between I get something cool. You know, we're going to use a 4K camera. I don't want to put this on 4K 30 second videos because I'm just going to fill up a card with raccoons in the next week. I'm going to do the 1080 videos just to save myself some space. So I got a 32 gig card. I'm gonna leave it on video mode. I'm gonna use this to prop it up. These things are lifesavers, super cheap, um, but they, they really work well when you wanna put a camera in kind of a different location. So we're gonna set this up pointing into the hole. Uh, another thing I'll do is try to frame it so that I'm not getting many deer in an area like this with a high deer density. They also cause some problems if that's not what you're trying to get. So I'm trying to get a predator here. I'm gonna have the camera pretty tight. I'm gonna leave it close to the hole. We're gonna run 1080 video. And I won't check this camera again for a couple months, like I said, just because predators can be really finicky about having human scent in here over and over. So we'll get this set up and, and see what happens. Once we finish setting up the first camera, we continue to make our way through the property, looking for fresh sign and checking a few existing cameras along the way. We decided to hang our next camera just outside of a well-used bedding area over an existing scrape. Well, now we're thinking deer. I'm getting ready to set this camera up here on the cedar tree. Uh, this was a big community scrape and really is a great spot to have a camera all year round because these licking branches, when they're in a, an area like this with high deer densities, they get used a lot. So these deer will continue to hit these scrapes even though they're not actively using them. They continue to hit these licking branches throughout the winter. So you get lots of good pictures and as a, a bonus to this particular spot, it's where I've gotten a few pictures of what was my target buck for most of the year. Um, so I, I have this camera here hoping that if he's around, he'll come back through and hit this looking branch at some point, and I'll know for sure that he survived. I do have a picture of him on the 22nd, not too far from here, so there's a good chance he made it, but I want to get that one picture here in January to make sure that he, he did survive the season. I do this on a lot of scrapes. I'll set the delay to 30 to 45 seconds, but then I'll put it on a burst mode because when you're on a scrape, even this time of year, you know, you're hoping for an individual buck to come through. And you're going to get does and you're going to get fawns and button bucks and all kinds of stuff that use this. Um, but when that buck comes through, I want to make sure I get multiple pictures of him. You know, if we're not in video mode, we're just doing still photos. It's important to get multiple pictures. So I'll set that burst mode up, maybe increase the, the gap between pictures a little bit so you don't take quite so many pictures during the, any given time frame. Uh, but that seems to work well. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to do a 30 second delay and then I'm going to do a three photo burst. So if we do get that buck in here, I'm hoping to see... I'll get a few pictures of them. This is a newer stealth cam here that we're using. Um, these things have really come a long way in the last five to ten years. Double A batteries, so we're getting super good battery life for not a ton of money, which is really important. Um, and this one takes like 26 megapixel still photos, which is pretty incredible for the size and the price point that this one is at. Um, love the 4K cameras, love the wireless cameras, but not everybody can afford those. Uh, so this is a more reasonably priced option. You're still getting great photo quality, and you also can do video mode on this in 1080, which for almost everything is completely fine. The video still looks really good. It's not 4K, but at 1080, still looks really good. It doesn't take up a ton of room on a card. And again, this is more of a kind of a price point model. So I run a lot of these. Like I said, I like the 4K cameras and the wireless stuff, but probably more than anything, I use these guys right here. Well, we're kind of at our last stop here. Um, this is not what I was planning on doing with this camera. I was looking for a cool log crossing, which I had one, uh, but we had a lot of rain here the last few weeks and ice and uh, river came up and blew the log away. So it uh, didn't look like it was gonna be very promising the way the log was situated now. So what we're gonna do is actually set this camera up on this old bridge that we walked in on. Uh, bridge is, I don't know, five or 10 years old and the, the river is taking its toll on it. It's not very passable anymore, but there's fox tracks on it when we walked in. So I know that there's animals using it. Uh, so I'm gonna set it up on this and see what kind of animals are coming across this bridge when we're not looking. And hopefully we'll have something come through here in the next few days. As we made our way back to the truck, we stumbled upon a deer carcass with lots of fresh sign, so we decided to hang our last camera there. 
it's always amazing how many different animals will visit a carcass in a short amount of time. Instead of leaving your trail cameras inside this winter, you may want to go for a walk and hang a few up. It can be a great way to get an inventory of the animals in your area and to spend a little extra time outdoors during the winter months. Hey everybody, once again we are here at Antlers Fireside Grill Canadian Lakes with Chef Extraordinaire. Jim Wood. Jim, what are we making here? We got some sort of fish. What are we doing here? So we got white fish and we have walleye. Okay. Obviously, you don't you can use whatever fish you want on this okay. one. Okay. Um, but we're gonna do a fish cake. Fish cake. Yep. And what is it? What do you put in that to make that uh, make that work? So we've got a lot of different ingredients over here. Um, we've got some uh, celery, onions, some green onion, mayo, eggs, mustard, fresh dill. So first, we got to cook the fish, and we're actually gonna uh, blacken it with a little bit of Cajun seasoning. We're going to cook it all the way through then, right yep. off the get-go, okay. Yep. Any key in picking out a good blackening set? I've tried to do that before at the house and I never seem to get one that's good. Do you have uh, one that you like? Paul Prudhomme makes a really good one, actually. We make our own seasoning, but um, gotcha. if you're going to buy it at the store, I would, I would go with the Prudhomme one. Okay. I believe it's called Redfish Magic or something like that, but it's pretty good. All right, so we're just going to add these to the pan. What kind of oil do you got in there? This is just olive oil. Okay. So yeah, we're just gonna cook these through real quick. What do we do now, Jim? We got our fish cooked off. We're ready to go. What's now we're next? just gonna saute some vegetables. Real quick, like. Okay. While we're doing that, we'll just start adding some other ingredients to the pan or to the bowl. Got some egg yolk. Oh, I'm sorry. One egg is what that is. One egg, okay. And then this is fresh dill. Okay. Worcestershire. Lemon juice. Some Tabasco. Green onion. Salt our vegetables here. Got a little Dijon mustard. You can use whole grain. You can use pretty much any mustard you want, actually. And some mayonnaise. Right. So basically, you're going to refrigerate that for about a half an hour. Okay. And then we're going to cook the eggs uh, in once they're all together then, or how does that work? Nope. We're going to make the cake. So we'll add this to mixture here with some breadcrumbs, form them into cakes, and then we're going to cook the cakes on the stovetop. Nice. Okay. All right. So now we've got the majority of the ingredients in the bowl, and we're going to add our cooled fish and vegetables back. And why was it important to cool them down first? Well, it'll, it'll fall apart on you, so the fish has got to firm back up a little bit, okay. so it's just gonna it'll just flake very easily. I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but... But ideally, you'd want to yeah. chill it for a little bit, okay. And then what kind of bread type stuff are we putting in there? This is panko, which is a fine like okay. Japanese breadcrumb. You can find it in most stores yeah. now. You probably want to put those in kind of incrementally like that, because if you get it too, if you have too much bread, it would just what? It just dry out, it won't be very good. Okay. And what is the name of this dish? This is going to be a whitefish and walleye cake served with a jalapeno tartar sauce.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. We've got a lot of great wintertime fun headed your way. We'll be doing some more ice fishing, of course. We'll also do some small game hunting, and we'll be out on some of those crazy tournaments that happen around the state this time of year. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. Our website is michiganoutofdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on most of the social media sites. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully you'll see you right back here next week in your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Michigan's hunters and anglers are essential partners to the health of the state's wildlife and habitats. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to ensuring our hunting and fishing heritage and Michigan's natural resources are preserved for future generations. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama February 27th through March 1st at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pond, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi February 27th through March 1st. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year and inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want to fire away stays with me night and day it's the road that leads to my home state i am a michigan man changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees i am a michigan man i am i am a michigan man ask where i'm from and i'll show you my hands lord above i love this land i St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, St. Marie.